Hello, thank you for joining me. See, in this video, I'd like to show you a little bit more about Sheets. This is our video number three in regard to setting up a title block. And what I like to do in this video is uh, show you uh, around the title block a little bit. One thing to keep in mind about a title block and the sheet template that we're setting up here is that it's generally reflecting the needs of the class. Just as if you were working for a firm, a design firm, we're going to be needing to uh, set up um, you know, and make modifications to their title block. Uh, these things are designed to give out the information to the person who's going to be building your project. So it has to be, first of all, it has to be the same from project to project. You want the things to look very similar, and that will include your logo. And uh, you also want to make sure that it's readable. Ultimately, it's got to be readable because this is your project. This is the way you present your project, typically in sheets like this. And you want to make sure that the sheets are the same from sheet to sheet and they're consistent and text size is right and everything is readable to industry standards and your company's standards. So, belabor that enough again, but I do want to make sure we cover that so you understand that. So, we're generally going to start from the bottom and work our way up uh, to the top of the title block. Uh, you'll notice that the sheet identification down here and the number associated with that are kind of uh, rotated a little bit. Everything else seems to be. Uh, you know, from the left to the right. This logo seems to be rotated, so it's to, uh, you know top to bottom instead of left to right. These are by design, typically. Uh, what you want to make sure is that your sheet identification, I've seen this rotated too, so it's uh, left to right, rather than uh, top to bottom as it is right now, is it's designed to be readable. Um, so at a glance, so generally, the very general information, like maybe the sheet number and uh, the project name, the sheet name, the project title, stuff like that, typically are in the largest boldest te text. So when you look at the sheet, uh, specifically at, at a glance, that these things are uh, easily read from a distance and you can quickly uh, go from sheet to sheet. If you're looking for a different project, go to a different project. It just uh, makes it uh, very easy to read. And the more specific information, the text gets smaller. So there's going to be four different text sizes we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to start from the very smallest, 330 seconds of an inch, which is uh, the text default setting for our dimensions. We're going to keep that, and I've seen that as a, kind of a standard out there. That's our smallest text, and where you find the smallest text in our title block is going to be up here, where we have uh, some very, very specific information uh, in regard to, like, maybe designed by or checked by or, uh, you know, eventually approved by, your plot scale, plot date, and things like that. That's where you find the smallest text. Next size up is going to be an eighth of an inch. It's going to be a little bit bigger. This text down here for sheet identification, which we're going to rename to sheet number, is an eighth of an inch. Then you go up to a quarter of an inch and eventually three eighths of an inch. Again, under the same uh, thought that the, the bigger the text, the bolder the text, the more general that information is and the more need for that information to be read uh, from a distance from, uh, you know, at a very quick glance. So, I think we've said enough about this. In the next film, we're going to start talking about making some modifications to this. But, oh, one more thing. One more thing needs to be talked about, and that is the two different kinds of uh, text that we find in a sheet. Let's look at this real quick. We have text and we have labels. If you click on sheet identification, you'll notice that what it is, is it's an eighth of an inch text. But if you go down here to the actual number, it says it's a, it's a label. A label is something that's parametric in uh, Revit architecture. What it, uh, that means is it's going to go out and seek that information somewhere else in your project or in your drawing in order, to, or in order, pardon me, in order to get that information. For instance, sheet 101 might be our site plan. It might be our site plan or maybe our first floor plan. And what it's going to do is when we put in our floor plan into a sheet and we actually create a sheet of Revit architecture in a project, we're going to name that sheet, like first floor floor plan, and then we're going to number that sheet, perhaps A101 or 102 or A103 or whatnot. It will pick up that information here in this placeholder, which now is just called A101. It's going to pick up that information and put it in there. If you scroll up here a little bit, that sheet name, which is could be our first floor floor plan, it'll seek that out too in how we name our sheets in our project, and it'll populate that area. So sheet labels, if you're clicking at labels, or parametric, it's going to seek that information somewhere in your project or in your sheet when you create that sheet, and it populates that information into your sheet. It's very uh, cool and automated for it to do that. So enough for this video. Join me for the next one.